Behind me is the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. It is an insane off-roader, fully, fully loaded, but it will cost you about 65 grand before on-road costs. That's quite a lot of money. So is it worth your hard-earned cash? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in today's review. Now, as always, we're gonna start by taking a look at the exterior of the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. We're gonna move on to the interior, see how it drives, and we're going to launch it from zero to 100 kilometers an hour using my specialist timing gear, use a satellite, so it's accurate. We're also gonna take this thing off-roading, and then I'm gonna finish on, should you buy a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon? So let's get straight into it. Before we get into that, though, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, Car Vertical. Car Vertical is an online platform where you can see your car's entire history, even if it's hidden, it's got like 20 different databases that pulls data from databases and stuff. As you guys know, I'm looking for a car at the moment and I was thinking about the Jeep Wrangler. It's a pretty cool car. Uh, so I did my research, put in a VIN of one I was looking at and it's going to be a big no from me. And come here, I'll show you why. So as you can see, I've got the Jeep Wrangler here and yep, accident. So see that it was made in the US, brought to Australia, blah, blah, blah. What was the accident like though? Well, yeah, that's not great. <laughs> Power drain, chassis, steering wheel. I don't like that. So we keep going down. Let's see if we can get some photos of it. And yes, we have photos. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's like this one. I wouldn't get that. Would you get that, Jacob? No way. No, I don't think so. So if you want to get 10% off your car vertical report, go into my description, click the link, or I've pinned it up in the comment section below. Click it anyway, it helps the channel out. Anyway, let's get back into the review. Starting with the exterior, of course, and yeah, it's the Rubicon. So it's fully loaded and being a press car, it's small loaded on top of that. So you get things like this steel nudge bar here, which is pretty awesome. I don't think that comes as standard, though I could be wrong. Up front, you've also got some tow hooks here, which are painted in red, that's pretty cool. Here's a little Easter egg for you. You've got seven slats to this grill and that's for each continent of the world. That's Australia. Right there, that's Australia. Part of this Rubicon, you get these LED lights here that are super bright, they're really cool. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot going on. I mean, you've got these like fake hood scoops up here, at least they're mostly fake. I love how boxy it is. And I think that's one of the design appeals of it. I mean, it, it looks very similar to the original Willys Jeep. Not that kind of willy weirdo, but yes, it's uh, it's pretty damn sick with all of its just straight angles everywhere. Now coming around to the side and here you can notice a few more changes as well. It's actually pretty crazy. So here you get these enormous 17 inch wheels. Why did I say enormous when 17 inches is quite small? Well, it's because they've got massive rubber on them too. These are mud terrain tires as well. So straight from the factory, you can go some pretty serious off-roading in this thing. And as you'll see, we'll talk about, it comes with some pretty serious off-roading kit as well, being the Rubicon. You've got some cool Easter eggs, like there's another wheelie down there. Willie's Jeep, of course. And uh, yeah, you can see all the suspension componentry in the back. Uh, it's, it's pretty insane. But let's keep coming onto the side. Got some scratchy plastic mirrors there. You've got the Jeep badge there. Wrangler, ooh, unlimited. Unlimited, because you've got unlimited amounts of space being the long wheelbase. So I think that's right. But look here, you've got some exposed uh, door structural things there that are beefy and manly. You've got your keyless entry and go. It wouldn't be a, a luxury Jeep without it. This you can actually take off. That's pretty sick. You can make this thing into a pseudo convertible. So really like that. Jacob and I behind the camera did that earlier. It was too cold. It was too cold, man. <laughs> It was far too cold. And then coming to the back, I really like the back of this thing. It's just the classic quintessential Jeep. Is that, is that a word? Quintessential. Quintessential, that's it. <laughs> You've got your LED tail lights here. They're pretty cool. You've got some exposed screws. Again, wouldn't be an off-road Jeep without it. You can see here, you've got a camera there. It's got a pretty awesome camera on it, actually. And it's good for off-roading, as you'll see. You've got a third brake light there. And this is really cool. You've got this kind of like split tailgate situation going on here. So, I mean, I really like that. Don't mind the back, it's all of our camera gear in it. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty sick. We'll come back to the boot in a second because it's got some cool stuff in it. But this thing looks pretty damn, oh, and I did it wrong. Got it. This thing looks pretty damn sick, but let's talk about the interior. The interior space of the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon is surprisingly nice. I really didn't expect it to be this good, but I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. You've got this really cool like anodized metal finish here, although it is of course plastic. You've got this soft touch kind of dotted around the place and that does help to reduce the road noise a tiny bit, but as you'll see in the drive, yeah, this thing isn't about the drive. It's, yeah, anyway. Storage space is really good. We've got a couple of cup holders here. They're like rubberized. You've got a little phone storage holder thing there. In the side pockets, you've got this like net, which is pretty cool. The glove box is a pretty tiny size and I'm not entirely sure why, but yeah, not great. 
Looks like there might be a speaker there. Speaking of, there's nine speakers in this car, including some in the roof, and they sound amazing, like really weirdly good. But uh, Americans, they like their sound. We have a uh, cigarette lighter there, or 12 volt socket, depending on who you are. We've also got a USB-A port, USB-C port, and an AUGS in port. You don't really see too many of those. And being the Wrangler Rubicon, this comes with some pretty serious off-road kit. So here we have our low range selector here, or really four wheel drive selector, two high, four high auto, so you can let the car just decide when it needs to be in four wheel drive. Then you've got four high part-time, you've got neutral there and four low. And as we'll talk about, this thing has a pretty insane off-road, especially for low ratio gearing. It's pretty insane. You got a front and rear locking diff, but you can't just lock the front. It's either rear or front and rear. You've got off-road plus mode, and you can also disconnect the front sway bar. So pretty insane. And then you've got some, you've got four, you know, auxiliary customizable buttons there just built in, and I've accidentally disconnected the front sway bar. So let's put it back on. So what else is there? Well, in terms of technology, you get this pretty small-ish now, 8.3 inch display, and it's okay. A little bit small the newer you know Mopar kind of systems are just a bit better but it's okay up in front of you is a tiny little digital instrument cluster but you can see a few different menus and it's pretty easy to use then you've got your tachometer on the left speedometer on the right this steering wheel is surprisingly very nice too it almost feels luxury in a jeep Wow. But yes, you can control pretty much everything from here, including your adaptive cruise control, but there's no lane keep assist or lane centering assist. Not necessarily a bad thing. I just came out of the Jeep Compass and that thing was horrible. It would literally like, throw you into the next lane when it thought you were too close to the other side. So yeah, dumb. Oh, and then how could I forget this? You've got this enormous shifter here, but it's got a little willy on top of that too. Another nice little Easter egg. And I really like these, the maps down here. We'll just do a b-roll of that i think it'd be impossible to get otherwise <laughs> but yeah, you can see like the topography over there uh of something i'm not sure probably the rubicon trail yeah oh also you can remove the roof so let's do that really quickly uh it's pretty simple you just got a few kind of things around you you would need to be out of the car to really do this properly but yeah, look you can lift it up and take it out <laughs> what do i do now <laughs> Put it down. I'm pretty sure I took out the wrong side first. Anyway, it's uh, we'll fix that up. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, and the seats. How can I forget about the seats? They're all right. They're a leather piece here. They're heated too, which is nice, but not cool. That is a bit of a shame, but not the end of the world. And also the steering wheel is heated too. Let's talk about the back. Okay, so in the back seat now, and I have plenty of space. Heaps of leg room, heaps of toe room, and heaps of headroom here too. And I'm five foot 11, I sit pretty far back as well. So yeah, I don't know what people are complaining about when they say they don't have enough space back here. It's quite a lot. You got a couple of air vents here too. You got your window control switches. You've also got two USB-C ports, two USB-A ports. And the Rubicon is also fitted with a special inverter, which allows you to have AC power. So 230 volts, 150 watts. That's pretty decent right there. So yeah, that's, that's pretty sick. You've got a storage area there. A couple more, I guess here. You got more of this topography going on there, which is pretty sick. And I love how you're kind of sitting within this roll cage. It's just a really, really cool look. It kind of extends to the back as well. It does kind of ruin the practicality a little bit, but it just makes up for it in, in personality, really. And also these seats, they're leather, they're pretty comfy. You've also got a armrest here, um, except it's, this one's kind of gross. I don't think it was cleaned very well, Jacob. <laughs> a couple of cup holders there too. Um, yuck, put that one put that one back. Let's talk about practicality. Okay, so what's boot space like in the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited for unlimited space? Well, I mean, it's not unlimited, but it's pretty good. So inside you get actually plenty of room. And even though it does have this pretty enormous roll cage, which as I said, I just love, I think it's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, it leaves a little bit to be desired. There are some cool things in here though. You've got some, you know, movable tie down points here and you've got three more on the back of the door there. You've also got this cool plaque here that kind of shows different stats of the short wheelbase and the long wheelbase. This of course being the long wheelbase. And then you can also put down the rear seat. So you drop the headrests first and then you can just push them down and off they fall if there wasn't a million things in front of them right now. But yeah, you do get even more space when you do that. So it's pretty damn good. Oh, also you got this, I guess, movable or reversible cover here with some more topography there. And then under here, you get a bit of underfloor storage there too. So, I mean, it's all pretty nifty and pretty impressive. And yeah, I love this split kind of tail tailgate design. That's also pretty cool. 
let's talk about its specs. Getting into the front of the car, or the bonnet, as normal people call it, is actually a bit of an affair. So you have to unlock these two straps here, then you kind of just fish in, push that open. You've got this hood latch here, but we don't want to do that. We want to damage the car by very gently, very gently, bare yes, snow. Now you've got full access to your engine in case you ever need to pull it out, but uh, hopefully you don't have to do that. It's a 3.6 litre, naturally aspirated six cylinder engine. It puts out a pretty healthy 290 kilowatt of power, 347 newton meters of torque. And this thing weighs about two tons, so you wouldn't expect this to be very sprightly, but it actually feels pretty damn sprightly. In fact, let's... Let's talk about that. Let's let's launch this thing. Okay, so now we're gonna launch the new Wrangler Ultimate Rubicon. We're gonna see how quickly we'll go from zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Got my specialist timing gear here set up. Jacob outside, pour him. Let's do it. Alrighty, we're gonna break boost launch it. I felt bad doing that. Zero to 100 in 9.11 seconds. That's okay, not the best, not the worst. Okay, so now we're gonna go off-roading in the Jeep Wrangler Ultimate Rubicon. But let's start off with the basics. So 42 degree approach angle, you've got a 21 degree ramp breakover angle and a 32 degree departure angle. So some pretty good numbers for stock standard. So you've got 252 millimeters of ground clearance and 760 millimeters of wading depth. But what's more impressive is the kit that you get as part of the Rubicon package. Now, as I said, you get these mud terrain tires, they're great, but it's the actual hardware underneath that has changed. So you get a front and a rear locking differential. Really, really good for splitting torque between the wheels and pulling you out of those really sticky situations. But you've also got a disconnecting front sway bar, which helps for more wheel articulation, which is very impressive. Not to mention, of course, this comes with a proper low range case and not just any low range case. It is a 77 to one low range case. That means that this thing can really crawl along the rocks at very slow speeds while being within the peak power and torque band. And here we're gonna do some very, very light off-roading, but it will give you a little taste of what you can expect if you buy yourself one of these. Okay, so we're gonna warm up a little bit with some lighter off-roading before getting into the more intense stuff. Intense for me anyway. So let's put the car into four high, part-time, and then down to four low. Cool, the car is in neutral. We'll put on the front and rear locking disc. We don't really need it, but I'll have it on anyway. It just splits power between the wheels equally. So you're not just going to have power sent to one wheel if it's free spinning, because that's how an open diff works. Put off-road plus mode on. That kind of just changes the throttle response. It also changes the shifting points in the car. It kind of just essentially tells the car, hey, we're off-road. Um, and let's disconnect the front sway bar as well, because that will actually give us more articulation between the wheels. That is on when you're driving. You have to keep it on when you're on hard paved surfaces. It gives you a lot more stability. But when you're off-road and you disconnect it, the wheels just can move a bit more freely. Okay, so let's test out how the roll and pitch of this car is. I've actually got off-road pages here, which shows me what angle we get to. So again, light off-roading, but we're starting off pretty light. I just want to see how the articulation goes. Oh, I'm loving this crawl mode. It's so slow, yet I'm in a really good RPM space. Okay, now I've switched on my trail cam so I can see the front of the car. That's pretty damn cool. I just want to test out the articulation of this. We've got a little dip here. I just kind of want to test out how good the wheels stay on the ground. So I actually want to test out and check exactly how good this is. Yeah, look at that. You can see the front sway bar has disconnected and that's what's allowing it to kind of get that more travel and keep it, the wheels on the ground. Let's have a look at actually the other side. Yeah, you can see it really good from this angle. If you come back here, that wheel is still quite normal, but this one has dropped all the way down. That's pretty cool. But this is the real test. Let's check it out. Now, unfortunately on the farm, it hasn't been raining too much. So I don't have much of a way to test you know, it's, its ability to get out of uh, wet situations or muddy situations. Although with its mud terrain tires and front and rear locking diffs, I'm sure it would be absolutely fine. But this is a bit of a test for any car because this really tests out the approach, departure, ramp breakover angles. And also we can get to some pretty extreme angles here too. So uh, we're gonna do it in the Jeep, see how she goes. Am I a little bit worried? Yeah, but I'm sure we'll be right. I'm gonna keep the windows down so I can speak to Jacob in case something goes wrong. Let me know if I'm about to tip. 
So this is pretty good. Oh, the wheel just dipped in there with no issue at all. Now there is some mud over here, so I guess that will be a bit of a test on how to get bogged. This rock crawling ability of this car is insane. It's just pulling itself. My foot is not even on the accelerator, but it's just, it's pulling itself through this. I am so impressed. Dude, so cool. my foot wasn't even on the accelerator. It just did that all itself. Really? That's insane. All right, let's get into how this thing drives when you're just on the road. Okay, so here we are driving the Jeep Wrangler Rubik. Oh my God, I think I just killed a bird. <laughs> We're on a gravel road right now and this thing is actually surprisingly comfortable. Like I didn't expect it to be this comfortable. Everything's going wrong. Parking brake is apparently still up, but it's not. Hold the specialist time gear, friend. All right, but this is the real test here. And that is giving it some sauce gently because we're on gravel still. And this is rear wheel drive when it's not in four wheel drive, but I do have it in four wheel drive order. Anyway, let's give it some sauce. decent. I, I wouldn't say it's slow. No. You know. Definitely not the fastest thing in the world. But I actually quite like this V6 engine. It is a petrol engine. It isn't a diesel. Australians love their diesels, although that is falling out of fashion now. It is paired to an eight-speed torque converter automatic transmission. I'm pretty sure it's a ZF unit and it is absolutely fine. In fact, it's better than fine. It's very good. When you're just driving along, it is very, very comfortable. You have coil spring suspension all around and that does help to soak up quite a lot of the road bumps and imperfections because frankly, Victorian roads suck eggs. It's very true. They suck eggs. I will say though, there is a lot of road noise in here. It does not help that it's got these massive mud terrain tires. There is a lot of body roll as you would expect. Oh. Speaking of bad ergonomics, my foot, like the tunnel in here is awful. Like the transmission tunnel, I don't know if it's just a right-hand drive market thing, but my, my, the only place I can rest my left foot, obviously being an automatic, is under the brake and that's it. And that's not great at all. But back to road noise, yeah, it's pretty loud in here, especially because you can remove the roof. There just isn't much insulating you. And I don't know, it's a little bit tiring I've found. It's definitely a bit of a pig on the road, as I said, but I mean, it's not unsurprising. If you compare it to cars like the Suzuki Jimny, same kind of thing. In fact, that's worse. That just gets blown around the road. You do definitely feel a lot of, you know, being pushed around in this thing, but that's because it's shaped like a brick. Nothing very aerodynamic about this car. Not that it's trying to be very aerodynamic, but as you saw in the off-road section, it does a pretty damn good job at being an off-roader and being an on-roader. I'm going 60 kilometers an hour right now, but it feels like I'm going 100. <laughs> I'm being thrown around right now. I can easily go 80, 90 around this in most other cars. Give it a bit of sauce. Oh, uphill, no problem. I actually really like this engine. I really like this 3.6 liter V6. I think it's a very good pairing. And actually in the US, and I'm pretty sure they're bringing it to Australia, gonna be able to get a naturally aspirated V8 with like 392 kilowatt of power. Something just ridiculous. Serious? Well, maybe I could be wrong about that, but it's it's very powerful. We are coming up to Saucy Corner. So Jacob, this is the first time. You've never experienced Saucy Corner before, didn't have I, you? Didn't I experience it in the MUX? You did. Which did pretty well. <laughs> all right. Let's burn out, bro. Shh. You're ruining the experience for all my viewers. Okay, this is one of the first hairpin. This is rear wheel drive uh, when it's in two wheel drive mode. <laughs> I can just hear the back end. Come on, baby. Go, go, go. Do you know what? It's actually respectable. I expected it to lose traction a lot more there. I mean, it did break the wheels, but whatever. We were going to like 30. <laughs> we were going like 30, but it felt like 400. Look, I think around town, it's not the greatest car. When you're driving it on the twisties, it's not the greatest car, but it will get you to your destination in relative comfort. And especially in this Renegade, no, it's not. It's a Rubicon trim. 
<laughs> especially in this Rubicon trim where you get like the amazing sound system and you get, you know, you've got the heated seats, although I think that's an optional extra as well. It's not the most serene experience out there, but it's still pretty cool. Let's get into my final thoughts. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Ultimate? Well, this thing is an extremely capable off-roader. Front and rear locking diffs, a disconnecting front sway bar. This thing kind of has it all for off-roading. On-road, it's a bit of a pig, as you would expect, right? It's, I mean, look at the tires. They're mud terrain tires, not highway tires. This thing's never gonna be extremely comfortable. The interior, though, is a surprisingly nice place to be, although it does feel a little bit, I guess, American in its quality. Kind of got that stereotype where it kind of just feels like a bit pseudo luxury. But otherwise, I mean, I really like this thing. 65 grand's a lot of money, but you're not gonna get much more of an off-roader at that price anyway, so, if you want an off-roader, go for it. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you around and comment down below. What do you think of the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon? Would you buy one of these? Have you bought one of these? And how upset were you with my light off-roading? I know a lot of you always are. Thank you guys very much for watching. And as always, I will see you next week.